Hi everyone, this is Alejandro Cremades and today we're going to be talking about how to send your pitch deck to an angel group. So before we get started, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and this way you will never miss out on any of the videos that we roll out every week. So angel groups are a great, great potential, uh, perhaps profile or target when you are thinking about raising money. I mean, those are groups that have tons of investors that could really make an impact to your, fi to your financing round. So in today's video, we're going to be breaking it down step by step, giving you all the insights so that you can really understand what it takes to send your pitch stick to these angel groups and how you can really cause an impression on them so that you get invited for a potential meeting or even that they explore an investment in your business. So with that being said, let's get into it. So what are angel groups? So angel groups are ultimately a group of angel investors, which is essentially people that have over $200,000 in income or $1 million in assets, essentially qualified accredited investors that come together and that essentially share deal flow, go to meetings together, invest together in companies. And there's tons of those angel groups, such as the New York Angels, the Houston Angel Network. I mean, there's many of angel groups out there. Now, the truth of the matter is, is that with really all those platforms like Crunchbase, like AngelList, now anyone can gain access to any type of deal. Uh, so obviously, perhaps the popularity has not increased that much of those groups, but Ultimately, those groups really came together because those were senior executives that wanted access to deal flow, to early stage investments. And as a result, that was the best channel for them to gain access to this type of opportunities. Now, the word angel investor comes from very early uh, on when those investors were financing those Broadway shows and that's why they were calling them angel investors because they were putting the money in and not expecting any returns back. They was just financing because they liked it, because they were excited with the opportunity and so forth. Now, that was actually where that angel investor and where the word of angel group comes from. But essentially, an angel group is a group of high senior executives, even perhaps some former entrepreneurs that are coming together to invest in companies. Now, angel groups, they could invest either directly, they see a deal, they like it, they invest uh, perhaps the investors that are part of the group all directly with their own name, and that's the way that they would be showing on your cap table, which is essentially where you keep the record of who has invested what, in your business and what kind of equity ownership they own. They can also invest via perhaps a special purpose vehicle, which is an LLC, or they can invest via a venture fund. And now you see a lot of these angel groups that are getting more sophisticated, creating their own investment vehicles, which are essentially funds, and using those to invest as a group into your business. Now, as mentioned, there is many of those angel groups out there. You know, really, you want to see what they have invested on, what kind of companies, what kind of stage, uh, if it's a segment that is uh, perhaps a little bit similar to yours. But in essence, here are the top angel groups. Ohio Tech Angel Funds, Tech Coast Angels, Investor Circle, Golden Seeds, North Coast Angel Fund, Band of Angels, Hyde Park Angel Network, Alliance of Angels, Pasadena Angels, New York Angels, and Houston Angel Network. So the way the angel groups actually work is going to be the following way. First, you're going to gain access to the person that is the gatekeeper of the angel group. This could be the director, the uh, deal or analyst or whatever that is. Essentially, this person, this individual is, is essentially filtering all the opportunities that are coming through, either via the email, either via introductions. They're going to take a look. They're going to analyze the opportunity. And if it makes sense, they might schedule a call with you. Now, if they schedule the call, probably they're going to ask you for the pitch deck before that conversation. 
Uh, other times what it could do is that they have the meeting with you, they have the call with you, and then they ask for the pitch deck to be sent as a follow-up after the conversation. Once they have reviewed, they may share this with perhaps the angel investor that takes the lead or that is the president or the chairman of that organization. If the chairman also likes the opportunity, then they may invite you to a pre-screening session. That pre-screening session, maybe you're going to be meeting either in person or via a video, three of the angels or perhaps a few more that are going to come into a small type of environment to get to know you, to get to see you present. Now, if you do a good job there, then they will probably invite you to the big gathering of the group. Uh, at that gathering, all the angels are coming together either via video or in person. And essentially what you're doing is you're presenting your business and allowing some time for questions and answers. Now, that's typically the way that it works. Then after that Q&A, you may engage and they will be telling you whether there's interest or not. And if there is interest, they will also be sharing perhaps what is the way that they would like to invest in your business. What will be that structure? So when it comes to sending your pitch deck to angel groups, you want to create a shortlist. You want to create a shortlist on people that are going to be able to be a fit, especially those groups, whether it is on your segment, on your financing cycle, or on your geographic location. Some of the areas or some of the tools that you're going to be using in order to guide yourself during this process are going to be the following. Crunchbase, Angel Capital Association, Fundraising consultants such as us, Panthera Advisors, LinkedIn, startup accelerators. Now, some angel groups websites may offer the possibility of you to submit your pitch deck. Now, I think that this is a mistake because ultimately social proof is everything. So what you want to do is you want to take a look at who are the founders, entrepreneurs that have received in the last six to 12 months an investment from that angel group that you're looking to target. And essentially what you're doing is you're going to be using that entrepreneur to introduce you to one of the angels in that organization or even the director of deal flow at that angel group. And that is the best way. That is how you're going to get that warm intro and how you're going to be able to reduce the amount of time from first touch point to money in the bank. So when you are engaging with the angel group, you are going to have different types of versions of the pitch deck. First, you're going to have the version that you're going to be submitting initially when you don't know them. Maybe there's going to be a version where you are removing the secret sauce of your business. You could even perhaps even remove the numbers because you don't know their agenda. You don't know if some of those angels already invested in a competing business against yours and you want to cover your back. So that's the first one that you're sending. Then the other pitch deck that you're going to be using is if you are presenting in person for towards that angel group, perhaps one thing that you want to do is remove as much text as possible from your pitch deck and really increase the amount of visuals in your presentation so that that way they get to focus on you because it's, it's essential that they focus on you. Now, the other deck that you want to have or the other version is perhaps for follow-ups, for follow-ups to meetings, for follow-ups to uh, phone calls. If you see that there is a clear fit and that you like them and that they like what you're doing, perhaps you sell them the full pitch deck with all the visuals, with all the financial information, all the text, all of that good stuff. And you would probably use that as the follow-up email. But again, you want to use those three different types of pitch decks because it really depends where you are at in the process and essentially you want to use a version that is going to match and fit the circumstances and where you're at with them. Now during the process you want to be very good at follow-ups. So once you've already put the pitch deck on their end, you know, maybe even that thank you pitch deck that is like after you've done your thing is like the last thing so that they get an idea of what your business is about. You will be sharing in here the full pitch deck, the full financial model. Then you want to go into the follow-up. On the follow-up, every couple of weeks, stay top of mind. Try to share something that has been of great, great, uh, a great update of the business. It could be more uh, revenues. It could be a new team member that you onboarded. It could be a news article. But you want to be top of mind and always, always, always 
use a call to action on those interactions. So never follow up with a, hey, just wanted to check in or hey, just wanted to catch up because that's noise. You want to add value and on every single update or every single follow up with an update that you're sending, make sure that you're not finishing it open-ended, like look forward to hearing from you or let me know your thoughts. You want to finish up with a call to action such as are you available next week or the following for a quick catch up call, question mark, best and your name. That way you are Act, you are putting the call to action and triggering them telling you what works on their end to reconvene on a call. Because your intention always is to get to the next meeting because the more meetings that you have, the less concerns that there will be because you would have that possibility of addressing them. And when there is no concerns, guess what happens? Money is in the bank because what separates you and the money is the concerns in between. When it comes to post-funding, remember that getting your round of financing is not a milestone, it's a stepping stone because the real work happens once you have the money in the bank. So you obviously want to make sure that there is clear expectations. Perhaps you're going to have one of the angels from the angel group representing them on your board. But again, you want to have expectations. Make sure that you're delivering on your promises and make sure that they're always updated so that perhaps when you need more money down the line, they already know what's going on and they're ready to jump in. So hopefully you like this video, send a like, you know, put a like there, you know, on your screen and then also leave a comment and let me know what you're up to and how you're finding those angel groups. Uh, and as well, as well, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on all the videos that we roll out every week. And if you're fundraising, send me an email at alejandro at pantheraadvisors.com. I would love to help out. Thank you so much for watching.